I now turn the floor over to our keynote speaker, His Excellency Pedro Pavon. Muy buenos días, excelencias, Your Excellencies, e invitados especiales, distinguished guests, damas y caballeros, ladies and gentlemen, señores de la prensa, dear press representatives, es de especial interés para mí, it is a pleasure poder for me to speak to a group of industry colleagues today who represent the OPEC member countries and to businesses that work in the hydrocarbon industry. Today, I would like to share our take on advancements in the industry as well as our vision and experience. I will address the opportunities that new technologies and techniques for innovative investors have created for our country. The development of new forms of energy and its impact is a subject that concerns us all, no matter the size of a country or its relevance. All of us take center stage in a world where technology has overcome the limits between the sphere of the collective and the individual, of the public and the private. One of the elements factored into the United Nations Human Development Index is access to energy services. It is clear that the lack of access to energy resources will negatively impact a country's development. Energy benefits society, and every industry needs this resource. Population growth increased development levels, as well as industrial growth, all come down to this one issue. The demand for energy in the world will drastically increase by 2040. Until 2030, OPEC um, projects an increase of 60% in the worldwide energy demand reaching 410 million barrels of crude oil per day, of which 80 will come from fossil energy fuels, natural gas, oil and carbon. Even the most conservative projections accept that the environmental effect of this development can have an impact on climate change. This is yet another argument that highlights the importance of generating oil from sources and technologies that take these global concerns into consideration. Nowadays, the oil industry thinks green. Thanks to research, new technologies have been developed and adapted to the areas in which we work. For decades, our work has been monitored and still is being monitored. The entire world is watching our every move. In the past two decades, the hydrocarbon industry has made progress thanks to cleaner and more efficient technology. In addition, important developments in the study of subsoil, including aerial geophysics, exploration with satellite technology, and 3D seismic have allowed for better accuracy in exploration, targeting and guaranteed oil reserves that offer high production volumes. This reduces the surface environmental impact. Cluster drilling, which is currently used in the oil industry, has also considerably reduced affected areas. Today, Ecuador relies on satellite technology for drilling activities 
In an effort to discover reserves, by the end of this year, we will see the first results, as we hope. Regarding technological advancements and, advancements and lower impact on the surface, Ecuador has several fields that are exemplary regarding environmental management, such as Banyacocha, which is located in the Banyacocha Protected Forest, and Limoncocha, located in the Limoncocha Fauna Reserve, which is the native habitat of the black alligator. These are fields located in e ecologically highly diverse areas in the Amazon, and they operate in limited areas without having environmental effects. Worldwide, the average recovery factor for crude oil is estimated to be around 35%. Thanks to improved recovery techniques, this rate could reach up to 60%. This increase in the crude oil recovery rate at affordable cost is a competitive advantage for the oil sector, especially compared to other primary sources of fossil energy. The U.S. Energy Information Administration estimates that in 2012 the amount of associated gas produced in the world reached 20.5 billion cubic feet, of which 15.9 were reinjected into the reserves and 5.4 billion were burned or vented. As you know, Operating an oil field also means managing water, petroleum, and associated gas. Traditionally, gas is burned in burners in an inefficient way. The Ecuadorian public company, Petro Amazonas, EP is working on a project to diversify power generation for its operation and to feed it into the national power grid. This project is called Optimization of Electricity Generation and Energy Efficiency, has the benefit of showing results from the early stages of implementation. Between 2009 and 2014, the project was halfway completed. In this period, it generated savings for Ecuador in the amount of $446 million, resulting from the replacement of diesel imports, which is no longer used for power generation. Now, how did we achieve this? With a formula that we all know, using parts of the associated petroleum gas for power generation. This translates into a decrease in fuel imports and the reduction of CO2 emissions by over 600,000 tons since 2009. Another benefit associated with this project is the centralization of power generation for the oil industry and the installation of transmission lines that make energy generation in each and every field obsolete, which reduces noise pollution in the Ecuadorian Amazon. Noise and visual pollution are both reduced because the amount of burners is slowly going down. In addition to this, the project also generates social benefits. In, in 20, 2014, the first connection between the electrical power grid and the local community in the Amazon was built. 
the so-called block two es area. It is important to mention that we are currently studying the use of combined energy for drilling, production, and oil refining with alternative energies such as solar energy and the use of heat from thermic processes to produce energy what we call cogeneration and reducing the oil industry's carbon footprint. Energy moves the world. It definitely does. More than half of the world's oil production is used for transportation. Statistics about oil demand by sector show that the transport sector accounted for 59% of the total, total oil demand in 2011, and the demand is projected to reach 63% by 2040. The challenge for the transport sector will be to find more energy alternatives in an effort to move more people with less environmental impact. To achieve this complex challenge, important technological advancement, advancements and investigation is required and research. No fuels such as natural gas for vehicles are already in use. For example, natural gas for vehicles and that's already available at some service stations in certain countries. The same is true for technologies and alternative fuels such as biodiesel, methanol, ethanol, electricity, hydrogen fuel itself and solar energy, which all offer great opportunities. In Ecuador, which began eight years ago, its decisive leap towards development, the current administration is implementing a policy designed to change the energy matrix with a focus on independence, environmental protection and sustainability. This policy includes the use of renewable energy, for which eight hydroelectric projects are being built. By 2016, 90% of energy used in our country will come from renewable sources. Upon completion of these eight hydroelectric plants, um, CO2 em emissions will be reduced by 8.23 million tons per year. As part of this policy, five years ago, we ha for five years, we have been uh, promoting the production and sale of biofuels for urban transport. That started in 2010. We started uh, with Ecobase, which is a fuel ba used for vehicles in the urban in urban areas mostly the largest coastal cities in Ecuador this fuel replaces 5% of domestic gasoline consumption in Ecuador Ecopais is a mixture of 5% ethanol and self-produced petrol base the use of ethanol lowers the use of high-octane gasoline by 9%, which translates into significant savings on the import side. Improved fuel quality is expected to go hand-in-hand -hand with enhanced vehicle engines. This uh, will require high-octane fuels. The oil industry will need to produce greater volumes of considerably higher quality products, especially gasoline. In 2010, in the European Union, vehicles produced 172 grams of CO2 emissions per kilometer, while in 2013, it was 127 grams. According to estimates, by 2021, the emissions will be of 95 grams of CO2 emissions. 
As we can see, vehicles around the world are helping to reduce the carbon footprint in the world. Environmental regu regulations are increasing regarding transport everywhere in the world. Thus, research and technology development will play a key role, key role in the oil and refining strategy as they provide energy to the sector. However, Projections show that vehicles with alternative fuels such as natural gas will account for less than 10% in 2040. The air transportation sector is expected to grow between 5 and 6% annually. However, fuel consumption will not grow at the same rate. The use of energy efficient uh, technologies is expected uh, to result in significant fuel savings. In the marine sector, the current situation suggests that it will switch to LNG, liquefied natural gas, as a new fuel. Environmental regulations regarding sulfur emissions will drive the development of technology that, uh, that are more efficient to desulfurize fuels such as diesel and fuel oil. In the case of land transportation, current concerns about air pollution, traffic, congestion, and energy security are the three main drivers of the current technological innovation. In 2010, the number of cars in the world exceeded 1 billion. And it is expected to ex exceed 2.5 billion by 2040. Vehicles with conventional engines, internal combustion engine, engines with diesel and gasoline accounted for 97% of world cars worldwide in 2013 and they will reach 91% in 2040 according to estimations. The global concern about climate change and efforts for regulating CO2 emissions are changing energy policies and markets, promoting investments and starting an avalanche of technological research in which the oil industry plays an important role. In this context, the environmental protection and sustainable development are key factors that will guide technological advancements in this industry. Considerable investments in technological development are expected, including carbon capture and storage, the reduction of flaring of associated gas, the development of hybrid solar gas power stations, and the production of more clean petroleum derivatives. I encourage you to reflect on these changes about these realities that, without a doubt, could be analyzed from different perspectives, savings for involved countries, great efficiency, but perhaps the most important issue of them all, protecting our planet with sustainable hydrocarbon development while achieving greater profitability for companies and a better quality of life for our citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency.